like a tree planted by the water we never will run dry so living
now? <laughs> Me? Yes. Good morning. That's it. Okay. Yeah, like the insurance commercial. I know everybody said you can talk louder. We know I have a big mouth, but um, social media cannot hear me if um, I don't use a microphone. That's why we encourage it so much. Uh, we want to welcome all of our visitors this morning. If you are a first-time visitor, please fill out the orange card in the back of your pew. Uh, give it to Mr. Tom. He's got his hand raised up there. Um, after service, we have a gift for you. Uh, the carpets were clean this week. So, yeah. If you are missing something from your pew that you normally have, like a fan or your Bible or your notebook, uh, check around. You found <laughs> You found yours. Um, the pews were not put back in the order that they were taken out in, so just peek around um, and see if you can find what you're looking for. There's quite a bit uh, of misarrangement going on. Um, there will be a meeting for um, people who serve the altar on Tuesday at 6.30. Uh, Ms. Jeanette asked me to announce that. The food pantry is going to be open on Wednesday. So we will be serving families on Wednesday. Uh, Ms. Carolyn let me know that we have some strollers back there that were provided. Um, there's some umbrella strollers and a double stroller. She wanted to offer them for sale. They're go the proceeds of those will go to the food pantry. Um, the, the umbrella strollers are $10 and then the double stroller is $50. So if you're interested in that or know somebody who needs one, um, send them her way. Otherwise, they're going to go into the pantry on Wednesday. Uh, we are still collecting Thanksgiving items because it's just around the corner now. I feel like I've been saying that for a while. But again, if you do not wish to shop, uh, you can give Miss Carolyn the money and she'll provide you a receipt for the items that she purchased to go uh, towards the food pantry. Um, and also, they would like donations of chickens or turkeys. Uh, the chickens are going to be whole chickens uh, for smaller families and then the turkeys they're going to be provided to the larger families. Um, and then again um, in January we will be moving to um, Saturdays, uh, the third Saturday of the month instead of Wednesdays. So um, keep that in mind when you are thinking about um, where you're going to volunteer and what you're going to do. Operation Christmas Child. There are no boxes back there right now, but Miss Jenny is working on them. We have uh, 50 more, so um, if you did not get yours last week or this morning, um, you will have the opportunity. And then those will be back on, or due back on November the 3rd. And then the following uh, couple of weeks, we have some uh, time scheduled to go through those boxes and just make sure that everything that's in there is appropriate. So we're um, planned for that as well. Um, they're going to do a cookie exchange during that, right? Okay. And um, don't forget to put the $10 in for shipping of that. Um, otherwise, you know, like I said last week, that's quite a substantial amount of money if, if we do not put that $10 in on the church. So um, make sure you're adding that as well. There's an envelope in there for you to put that in. On Wednesday, we will have Bible study. Yeah. yeah. It was really weird this week. Um, we come every Wednesday, and I was like, we should be doing something. But we were at home, and Hallie didn't have volleyball, and it was really nice. So we just enjoyed some quiet. Um, Harvest Festival and Trunk or Treat signups are still in the back. There are still lots of jobs to be filled or positions. Um, we would like any help that we can get. Um, there's there's plenty of responsibility for everybody or just a little bit of responsibility if you don't want a whole lot um, but take a look at that back there it's in the fellowship hall um, and see where you can help out and 
um, make our first Harvest Festival and Trunk or Treat a big success. We still have hoodies and zip-ups for sale if you guys would like one. It is starting to get a little bit cooler in the mornings, um, or if you're like me and dress your kids in long pants and long sleeves and then they're hot all day, um, but it is what it is. Um, and then one last, sorry, Cole has an announcement this morning. Um, it is, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so, um, yeah. And this is the Sunday that it's traditionally um, acknowledged for our pastors. So please, if you see our pastors, thank them. Um, being a pastor is, it's a tough job. They were their flock and under their wing. And I can't imagine, um, I, it's a, it, again, I feel like it's a thankless job, but it's wonderful. We have a card for you that we... Um, Duh. And then after service, there is a cake and punch in the fellowship hall to celebrate. So um, please join us for that. Um, is that it? Anybody else? Okay. So we can bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come together in your presence with our hearts full of gratitude to honor and worship you. Thank you for guiding us, for the blessings you've bestowed, and for the community that unites us in faith. On this special day, we lift up our pastors who tirelessly, tirelessly serve and shepherd us. Grant them wisdom, strength, and joy in their work. May their dedication and love inspire us all to walk closer with you. Bless this service, Lord and may your spirit move among us, drawing us nearer to your truth and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hang on, Miss Carolyn has something. Okay. Oh, there it is. Uh, a couple things real quick. Uh, Floy's in the hospital. Uh, for y'all, be praying for her. Daniel's recovering from surgery. He is in rehab uh, in Mount Vernon. And, yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, I went up there. Carol went up there Friday. I went up there yesterday and seen him, and he's in good spirits. So is Floyd. You know, uh, they're in great spirits. And then keep Mike Cohen in your prayers. He's been feeling, not feeling very well. So if you'll keep him in your prayers also. And then Carolyn's got a testimony. A testimony. Uh, Destiny Church has been, sorry. Destiny Church has a uh, prayer group, especially Barbara and Cheryl. I, numerous people have helped pray for my oldest daughter, Stephanie. Uh, she's been doing drugs for at least 18 years. Uh, so I'm up here today to praise God for all the prayers, praise God for all the help, praise God for Restore Church. Uh, Pastor Ray Brown uh, at the Gathering Church, yes, has embraced her and her husband uh, and got them completely off drugs for two years. Uh, yeah. Uh, so she's going through recovery uh, still, uh, but she'll get a certificate of completion next week for being drug free for two years now with that being said she has one child my oldest granddaughter and she told her mother years ago there will be no relationship between me and you until you're drug free for two years so I pray for the restoration of that relationship also uh, uh, I've, I've got a scripture verse um, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, uh, and it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, I can't see, by the mercies of God that you pr present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reason, reasonable service. Now, since she's been at the gathering church, 
she has also got, gotten a job out in the community, and guess what she's doing? She is uh, taking care of and ministering to women addicted to drugs. So she knows what they're going through. She's been there and she's done it. So now she's helping them get out of it and helping take care of their babies so that the welfare doesn't take them away from them. So praise God for, for all your prayers and all your constant prayers and help. It, it really is an answered prayer. i 
Gracias. When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Fear doesn't stand a chance when I God's always extravagant in his giving. Hallelujah. I like that. Your grace is enough. Praise God. He died for the whole world, the sins of the whole world, from the beginning to the end, past, present, and future. That's how powerful his blood was. And it's enough. I mean, it's more than enough. Praise God, the creator of the universe did that. Praise the Lord. And he's, he provides for us now. Every provision we'd ever need. You know, the Lord didn't create man and say, oh, man, they got to breathe. 
let's see, we gotta do something about that, you know. No, he, when he created he said it was good, really good. <laughs> and he provided everything. And that's past, present, and future too. I'll tell you what, we serve a good daddy. Woo! Praise God. There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything.
Neil, can you hear me? I don't think the mic's on. But yesterday we uh, had some plumbing issues in our kitchen and he's laughing. <laughs> but the last three songs that have played, it played out every minute of yesterday for us. He worked for probably six hours on our kitchen sink and then underneath the kitchen in the basement on the pipes and um, he's almost too handy um, or just enough to be dangerous but this song just told me that, that that God gave him everything he needs you know he got everything put back together for the third time yesterday after the third trip to Home Depot because um, it's not a project unless you go to the hardware store three times I don't know if you know that or not but that's what they say um, I did the third trip I went and got an auger and um, anyway um, he was down there I could just hear it, him go into town with it and he put it all back together and came upstairs and he's like okay let's run some water and see if these pipes move and the sinks just filled back up and I just the look on his face he was just kind of heartbroken and he said he'd been praying the whole time he'd been working on this that things would just go right back together and things would be okay you know so we could go do some fun family things because that's what Saturdays are for but so he said I'll just I'll call a plumber on Monday we'll we'll figure it out until then but a um, few minutes later we just hear the sink just release and all the water drained out and <laughs> And we have had everything's right back together and right back how it's supposed to be. And it's because of the grace of God and because of what he gave him. And so we're so grateful. But he provides everything we need, and we know that. So. I kept hearing, you, you there? I kept hearing this yesterday. It's a song called Waymaker. You guys know the song, right? Right. Even when we don't see it, he's moving. Even when you don't feel it. He's moving. We got to realize that. I mean, that's what Amber was talking about. I mean, it didn't look like anything was moving, but God was still working. God was still doing. Even when you don't, if you're here this morning and you're saying or watching by, by the live stream and you say, I don't feel it like it's working. I've been praying and I still feel sick. I've been praying and I still hurt. You don't feel like it's working. I've been talking to my boss, but he's still mean to me. It may not feel like it's working, but he is still working on your behalf. Just keep on believing if you're still not seeing it. I've looked, I've prayed for my spouse, you might say for years and years, but it does. I don't see any difference. God is still working. God is still working over and over again. They laid Jesus in the tomb, but it didn't look like anything was happening. It didn't feel like to the disciples anything was happening, but God was still moving. God is still moving on your behalf. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. Pick up your Bible and read because he is still working on your behalf. And then I'm going to give you a little testimony that happened yesterday. Fresh testimony. I like fresh testimonies. And we, we talk about because we give out a heart of love. And you got to hold fast your confession of faith. The Bible says hold fast your confession of faith. Faith is action. You know, we, we, we start out, we start being mental ascent, but then all of a sudden, you know, we need to begin to believe, need to see it's actually going to come. It will start coming when you start seeing it without seeing it. That's what you got to do. That's what, that's what the, the, faith is an action. Faith is a verb. It means action. You have to do something. And so and he tells us right here, he said in Malachi uh, 3.10, 
I start in verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. And you say, in what ways have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me in every of this whole nation. Bring all your tithes in the storehouse. And there will be food in my house. Try me now in this. It says, try me. Try me. My wife and I for years have tried God because you said, your word, the Bible says, bring my word back to my remembrance. Your word says this, Lord, because he's the same in the Old Testament as in the New Testament. So he, said, oh, he says, try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Well, I want to open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that you have not room enough to receive it. Revelation knowledge. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He says, I will. I means the most high God. El Shaddai is going to rebuke the devourer for your half, for you for your part. That I will have I will that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail and bear fruit in the field says the Lord of hosts and all nations will call you blessed for all you, all you will be a delightful land says the Lord of hosts yesterday morning I just pray I praise God for his goodness I praise God for everything we, we were going to a family reunion yesterday in Terre Haute my wife and I and uh so we went out and got out and got, got in the car, started going, and the wife said, where's the other car? <laughs> Not the red car, but the white car we have. I said, what do you mean? It's on the, on the side out there. No, no, it's not. She said. So I turned around. I'm down the street, turned around, come back. It was gone. And uh, so we, uh, I went to the police station, and the police station says, they were closed. You had a phone number, a phone number call. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. Police say it's totally closed. And so we had to call them. They said, we'll send an officer out right away. So they did. They sent three officers out. So he told them the story. And we had it parked in the driveway and behind the car. And uh, my mistake, I left the keys in the car. But they weren't in the They were in the council. Like, <laughs> doesn't make a <any> difference. <laughs> but anyways, the thing is, all of a sudden, something rose up inside of me, and we prayed. I said, Father, that car will be returned immediately in Jesus' name, intact and no problems. We told the police officer we had to go to Terre Haute. Two hours, two and a half hours later, they called me and said, we have your car. They told me where they found it. And so anyhow, I just praise God. I just want to tell you that even though when we make mistakes and do stupid stuff, my wife said, you learn anything. <laughs> she and what the funny thing part of this the rest of the story is this is the second time one of our vehicles got stolen because <laughs> I leave a car keys in there <laughs> I had a big truck stolen two years ago but anyway they found it and the next day so anyways so my wife said you learn anything and I said yeah I learned God's love and his grace <laughs> you have to remember God's grace supersedes our inadequacies he there to help us to have victory but we have to lay claim to his what his word says the bible says hold cold fast is confession of faith and the more you get the word of god the more you speak the word of god the more you're going to start seeing pictures of the word of god coming forth because the bible says we walk by faith and not by sight father we thank you for the opportunity that we can give to you Bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Father, you said you rebuked the devourer for our sake. Our Father God, that we look to you because you're the author and finisher of our faith. You are the most high God possessed of heaven and earth. You have given us, given us exceeding great and precious promises, and by these we walk into victory in Jesus' name. Because of your grace, your love, and Father God, teach us how we can let our lips be the, the pulpit to pro proclaim your word, Father. And we give you the praise and glory and honor and as a gift and a giver God, the people give. In Jesus' name, and everybody says. Amen. Are you past the point of weary?
Is your burden way too heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all the stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. may be seated. Kids are dismissed.
Yes. There we go. Can you hear me now? Barely. Can you hear me now? Am I getting louder? All right. There we go. Yeah. Can you hear 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 me now now now? <laughs> Sharon, come here for a minute and stand up here for a second. Yeah. I don't. Get up here. We just we want to thank you all before we forget, <laughs> but uh, for the card and for the kind words you've all said this uh, over and over. And uh, Amber said it's a thankless job. It's really not. You all do thank us a lot. A lot. We're <laughs> yeah, we're very grateful. And and we we count it a privilege to pastor Destiny Church. We do, and to be pastors to all you guys, all every one of you, and. Uh, yeah, there's no, there's no place we'd rather be than right here in the will of God. And it, the church has been growing, things have been happening, and uh, the thing I keep hearing is you ain't seen nothing yet. So th this doesn't end, it, it just keeps going. God just doesn't, God doesn't stop, increase, he continues to increase. Amen. You got anything you want to say? No, just, again, we appreciate everyone watching over me while I'm trying to recover. And now I gotta go buy bigger pants because uh, we never missed a meal. <laughs> we just appreciate your generosity and your yeah. love towards us, and, and we just love all of you guys. And yeah. Yeah. We just want you to know that as well. Amen. No, okay. Don't you back down. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I'm trying to find your hand. We'll change one of these. All right, there we go. All right. Well, praise God. Amen. Wanted to do that. It's it's amazing. Uh, Amber gave the testimony about Jason working on the plumbing and I didn't know what he was doing and Ken texted me and said the men's bathroom's not working right and so I, I text Sherm and Jason Sherm texts back or Jason texts back I must say and said I'll go over there and take a look at it I didn't realize what he had been going through with the plumbing at the house to turn around and then he came over here and worked on it and, and, and took care of it so we're thankful for that <laughs> it, it's, you never know what you're doing to people <laughs> when you ask them to do something. Oh, man. Oh, thank you, Father. Well, we uh, started last week, or when we first started here, we started talking about the harvest has come. And, and Jesus told the disciples that. He said the harvest has come. Too many times we're waiting for the harvest, and, and he says it's here. It's now. You know, so, so we've been talking about that, and for the past couple of weeks I've talked about growth. Uh, growth uh, is our position here at Destiny. Everywhere you look, you should see growth potential. You should see people that need Jesus. You should see people that need prayer or need help, and, and you reach out to them. And that's our posture, and the posture means, uh, a good posture is keeping your head up, looking at the field, seeing their white to harvest, uh, your shoulders back in expectation and ready for action, that God's going to use you to do something, and then your, your stomach tucked in, your tummy tucked in, and that's your fleshly appetites, keeping them under control, but being led by the Spirit, because if you're led by the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? And last week I talked to you about uh, going outside the camp, and that was about Moses, when Moses and the children of Israel would move, and you got to realize, when they were, when they were moving through the wilderness, I mean, you're talking, they say, between a million and three million people. That's a lot of people. And they would, they would take their tents down and they would move their tents. And Moses, outside of the camp, he pitched a tent called the Tent of Meeting. And that was where Moses, it said, would go and he would get along with God. And the people would come out there later with their request and give them to Moses so Moses could talk to God on their behalf. But he said he moved that tent outside of the camp. Why? Why was it outside the camp? You know, I wondered that a lot. Why was it outside the camp? Well, it was outside the camp because inside the camp is all kind of dis, uh, distractions. Everybody's talking. Everybody's trying to get your attention. Everybody wants a, a minute of your time. And it's, it's funny, in uh, pastoral work, everybody wants, only wants five minutes. But, but you only have so many five minutes, <laughs> right? But, and that's fine. If you need five minutes of our time, that's, that's perfectly fine. But Moses... A million to three million people needing uh, just a couple minutes of your time. There's not enough time. So Moses made this tent of meeting outside of the camp 
And when he went outside the camp, he'd meet alone with God face to face. And it says that God would, uh, that means face to face means everything was on the table. Nothing was off limits. God was going to talk to him openly and frankly. And he was going to talk to God the same way. Now the thing about this, you've got to think about Moses is they're, they're constantly moving. They wasn't like camping somewhere for three or four years. They, they were constantly moving. And, and the, it said that it had a uh, fire by night or a cloud by day that they followed. Everywhere that cloud moved, they had to get up their tents and let's go on. We're going to keep moving until that cloud stops or that fire stops. And, and where it stops at, then we can make up camp. So Moses' tent of meeting, the time he met with God which is like the time that you and I should meet with God on a daily basis, it was constantly having to be redone, readjusted, depending on where they were at. Sometimes it was probably hard to find an exact place to put it, uh, you know, had to find a uh, kind of a level spot. He was looking for it, but, but he had to readjust every single time they moved. And that's the way it is in, in my daily prayer time. I get along with God, and it seems like every day I have to adjust a little bit of something. Something's not the same as it was yesterday. I, I adjust something. Maybe it's the time's a little bit different than it was the day before. I have it set for a certain time, but, but something messes it up or whatever. I, I readjust it. But I get it done first thing. I don't wait till later on. And if things get goofy for some reason, I get in the presence of God. And I've had that happen lately where I get in the presence of God and all of a sudden this checklist of stuff I need to do starts trying to get me. Right? People at the church I need to text. These uh, other guys that I know I need to text. Something that I need to talk to Sharon about or, or, or my girls about or something like that. All that stuff is going on inside of my mind. Stuff about my uh, work. And I started doing the other day, what I tell people to do is when that happens to you, take a white piece of paper out, a clean sheet of paper, and, and just write down the thoughts you're having. Got to talk to Sharon about this. Got to talk to whatever, whoever about this, text whatever. Go on down through there. When you get that sheet written, then turn that sheet over or look at it and go, that'll get done when I'm done with God. When I'm out of my prayer time with God, and I turn that sheet over so it's not in my face anymore, and I'm like, okay, now I'm on, on to God. And, and it works, believe it or not. So Moses had that thing every day. He had to make a new place. Sometimes the place you have, it, it worked for a while, but all of a sudden it, it's not working anymore. Something's just off. Find a different place. Change something up. And get with God again. Change the way you're doing it. If it isn't working right for you, if you're not hearing from God, if you're not getting into the Word of God and being able to praise God and thank God that day, then you just need to change something up. Do it different. Start off, maybe you start off with praise and worship. At that time, maybe you need to start off with reading the Word of God or, or confessing the Word of God or pr uh, just praying. So you got to just change it up. So we talked about that. Well, then I begin to hear the, hear the Spirit of God talk to me, and you can put the title of the message up. He said this to me sometime last week, probably Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He said that at Destiny Church, this is an era of increase. Now, I don't use, never have used that I remember the word era. <laughs> it's not a word we use that nowadays, right? But, but the era of increase, you can put that definition up. Uh, if you got, yeah. So era is a long and de distinct period of history with a particular feature or characteristic. So that's what the word era means. So what's our distinct, fe what's our this long, okay, distinct, what's our distinct period of history? It's now and in the future with a particular feature. What's our particular feature or characteristic for this era we're in? It's increase. It's increase. And it's threefold. It's numeric, spiritual, numeric increase, spiritual increase, and financial increase. That's what's going to happen and is happening and will continue to happen in, our, in this era that we're in, this particular time that we're in. When people look back on this time in history, 
years and years from now when we all all dead and gone, if Jesus hasn't come back and there's a new pastor in here and he stands up like I did on the first uh, Sunday that I ministered and talked about the, the, uh, you know, the future of destiny and looked at the very past of it and what's happened and went over that, all that stuff. Do you guys remember that? A few of you do? Then they, they, if he does that, they do that same thing, they'll stand up here and they'll look back and they'll talk about this era of increase that took place at Destiny Church. Because this church isn't just a, meant to go one generation or one pastor, or two pastors, or three. Uh, three. It's a meant to go on and on and on until Jesus comes. Amen. The work's not finished. It's not finished with us. We're not done. This place will be full. Amen. This house of destiny will be full, full of people, full of the presence and power of God, full of the word of God. What happens once we only got so many seats, what are we going to do after that? I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to scare you, <laughs> okay? But there's things to do. There's things God's already talking to me about but because God's always ahead of schedule. He doesn't wait till it happens to go, oh, no. That, what a surprise. Now what are we going to do? It never, that was never said in heaven. <laughs> right? It gets said here a lot sometimes and, and in our daily lives, but God never said that in heaven. He, didn't, he never says, what are we going to do now? It's just not a phrase they use, right? So, so let's look at, in the Word of God, okay, let's turn to uh, Hebrews. It wasn't on the list of scriptures, I know. Uh, you guys don't have the list, but <laughs> I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Hebrews uh, 13, this is actually part of last week. I never got to it. And it's uh, Hebrews chapter 13, starting in verse 10. And I'll read out the uh, Amplified Bible. It says, we have an altar from which those who serve and worship in the tabernacle have no right to eat. For when the blood of animals is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin, the victim's bodies are burned outside the limits of the camp. Therefore, Jesus also suffered and died this, uh, outside the, city gate, uh, the city's gate in order that he might purify and consecrate the people through the shedding of his own blood and set them apart as holy for God. Okay, so Jesus was beaten, bruised, nailed to the cross. He was nailed to the cross outside the city gates. Isn't it funny? Moses pitched the tent of meeting outside of the camp. Jesus was crucified outside the city gates. And it says, uh, verse 13, Let us then go forth from all that would present us, prevent us, I'm sorry, for all that would prevent us to him outside the camp at Calvary, bearing the contempt and abuse and shame with him. For here we have no permanent city, but we are looking for one which is to come. Though, uh, through him, therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up a, to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of his lips, thankfully acknowledging and confessing and glorifying his name. So what do we want to do? We want to go outside the city gates, past the abuse, past the suffering, past the... Uh, let me find it. There's three things there. So we're going to go, we're going to go out past it. Uh, bearing, it says, bearing, verse 13, the end of it, says, bearing the contempt and abuse and shame with him. So, so basically, in my, my vernacular, what it is, is we're going to go outside of the city gates, away from what everybody else has to say about us, about what we're doing. I don't know why you have to have time with God. I don't know why you have to do this, why you have to pray, why you have to go to church on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights. Uh, some of you don't think you have to come on Wednesday nights. You're, you're wrong. I mean, if you work, that's different. That's different. But you should be here, right? Why not? <laughs> I mean, the word of God's going for it. Oh, I just put my plug in. Okay, so I'll stop that. But we're going outside those gates. It said bearing the contempt. They had contempt for Jesus when they drug him out the city gates and he carried his cross. It was a 100-pound beam that he carried on his back after 
he had been beaten, after they had put a crown of thorns on his head, after they had whipped his back, after they had ripped out his beard, they did all that stuff to him, they slapped him around, they spit on him. After they'd done all of that, they gave him the 100-pound beam that was part of that cross and said, now you're going to carry it through the city, outside the city, to where we're going to crucify you. It was so much, so heavy and so burdensome and he was so weak that he fell down and they, they took that cross in and, and called a man named Simon, not Simon Peter or Simon the leper, but another Simon and said, come and you carry the cross for him. So he picked the cross up and carried it. Now we got to pick our crosses up and carry them daily. Where are we going to go? We're going to go to the same place Jesus went outside the camp, outside the city gates. Bearing the contempt, bearing the abuse, the shame that, that you may feel. You might feel shameful for your past. You might feel like you, you've been, a, maybe you have been physically, mentally, or sexually abused. You take that to the cross. Why? Because Jesus has paid the price for all of that for you to get you free from it. Boy, a couple amens. Jesus has paid the price for you to be totally and completely free from all of that. That's right. All the contempt, all the abuse, all the shame you felt your entire life. Jesus has paid the price so that you can be free. Amen. Totally and completely free. But you've got to decide, I'm going to go outside the city gates and I'm going to get where Jesus is and I'm going to offer up the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of my lips giving thanks to his name. Amen. Praise, sacrifice of praise. It kind of means this. It's praise when you don't feel like praising. Amen. When you don't feel like you got anything to thank God about, you thank God anyway. Yes, I mean, if you've been abused, if you've been sexually, mentally, or physically abused, you stand up and you begin to praise God. And you say, God, I thank you that you have cleansed me from that abuse. You took it on yourself. In the book of Isaiah, I mean, if you read it, it says that you won't remember your widow, widow, widowhood any longer. For your shame, you'll receive double. God said, I'm going to take your shame away from you and you're going to receive double. Amen. How many of you want to increase? Amen. We're going to have it. Amen. The question is, will you be a partaker of it? Amen. There's plenty of moves of God that have happened all down throughout history. And all kinds of people get healed. All kinds of miracles take place. All kinds of people get freed. But within all those people in those stadiums where they got healed, there were people that left there sick as a dog. That's right. That's right. With the same junk they had on them before. Why? Because they could not get past their contempt, the abuse, and the shame. They couldn't go out to where Jesus is and get their eyes on him and off of themselves. But we can do that. Every one of us have the ability to do it if we'll only get up and go. So we've got to go out past the city gates. We've got to go out past everything that everybody else is saying about us or knows about us. Maybe they're not saying it. Maybe you feel like it's just a whisper as you walk by. They know your past. They know how you were. They know how they think you still are. And you, you think you, you have to have, you might have the kind of personality that you feel like you've got to have that, that person's approval. But you don't have to. Amen. The only approval we need is God's approval. The only approval we need. So go past that shame. Go past that abuse. Go out there to where you go to somebody and you bow your knee before him and you worship him. Why? Because he approves of you. Amen. 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 He approves of you. You're his child. He's your father. He approves of you. He loves you unconditionally. He knows how messed up you were. He still knows the mess up you are. But God says, I see you better than you see yourself. Amen. Amen. Let, let's, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so it said, verse 13 in Amphi, the Bible says, Let us go forth 
from all that prevents us. There are things in our life that prevent us from going out, out of the city gates to Jesus. Things that prevent us. They prevent us. Our opinion of ourselves prevents us. I'm not worthy enough. I don't have what it takes. I'm not a minister. I'm not this person in the church or that person in the church. I just can't do that. That's your opinion of yourself. God says you can do that. He didn't put anything in the Bible for you to do that cannot be done. And he said, go forth from all that prevents you. Go to Jesus outside the city gates. The other thing that might prevent you is other people's opinion of you. Like I've talked about, other people may think you aren't worthy. They may think you're just a low-down, dirty scoundrel. They may think that you're just a terrible person. They may look at you and have a label to put on you. That you have a label. The label could be adulterer. It could be failure. It could be addict, drunkard, abusive. All those things you used to be. But Jesus came into your life. So you've got to change your identity from being abusive, abuser, identity of being an adulterer, identity of being a failure, identity of being an addict or an alcoholic or a druggie. All those, all those things you used to be, you've got to change that identity. Because all, when you, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Amen. Anybody know that scripture? Yeah, yeah. If you're, in new, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Not some of them. Not a couple of them. Not a little bit of them. Not the little things, but not the big things. Or not the big things, but not the little things. He said all of them become new when you're in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ when the adversary comes up and he shows you a, a picture, you all of a sudden in your mind pops a picture of who you used to be. And he says, this is you. Just look at him. That ain't me, that's a photo. That's a, that's a memory. That memory ain't me. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm a child of the my, oh, most high God. I am forgiven. I am the victor, not the victim. I am an overcomer, not overwhelmed. <laughs> Amen. That's you. But you've got to make the decision to stand your ground, to not let the adversary get in your head, to trash talk you. Because God's powerful. And he wants to use his ability on your behalf, but he can't do it unless you let him. Amen. Aren't you glad I'm your pastor? <laughs> so, so, so look, oh, okay. I keep wanting to turn somewhere and I keep got to stay here. Uh, oh. Hmm. Says verse 12 says this, Therefore Jesus also suffered and died outside the city gate in order that he might purify and consecrate the people through the shedding of his own blood. Let, let me read it this way. Therefore Jesus also suffered and died outside the city gates in order that he might purify and consecrate you. That he might purify and consecrate you. Say that. Look at your, say that, you can't look at yourself, but <laughs> point your finger at yourself and say, Jesus died outside the city gates. He suffered. Suffered. In order that he might purify and consecrate me by shedding his own blood and set me apart as holy for God. Now, Jesus might have failed, or he did not. 
<laughs> right? I mean, either he failed and the Word of God's wrong, and we, we just have tonight, we come back after dark and have a fire pit, and we throw our Bibles in it and roast marshmallows and, and weenies. Because if, if this verse isn't true, then the rest of it's not true. <laughs> but he did what? He died and suffered outside the city gates. Right? Did he do that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's scriptural, it's historical that Jesus Christ died and suffered outside the city gates of Jerusalem. He died out there. It's totally historical, true, and it's scripturally true that that, that took place. And, but he did it for a purpose. He did it for a purpose. He didn't just do it because he had nothing else to do. He just didn't do it because God said, go die. But he did it for a purpose. And that purpose was accomplished. It was in order that he might purify and consecrate you. So either he failed and we can just burn our Bibles and, and go about our life, or he did it. He purified you. He consecrated you. Amen. You. Amen. Not just the preachers, not just the people that pray a lot, but you. He consecrated you. He purified you. Right? Amen. That's what it says. How did he do it? Through the shedding of his own blood. And not only that, he has set you, set you apart as holy unto God. That's why it says in Hebrews chapter 4, come boldly before the throne of grace. How in the world can a sinful person, how in the world can somebody that, that's messed up and, and, and is wrong and, and a holy God, how can I approach a holy God? Because he consecrated you. He set you apart as holy. Right? He said, come boldly before the throne of grace, that you can find grace and mercy in time. It says in the M5 Bible, just in time. When you need help, you can find it just in time. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. You've been set apart as holy. You've been set apart as holy. You are Holy before God. Your spirit man's holy. It's as clean as it's ever going to be. It's holy white before God. God doesn't look at it and say what a mess it is. God looks at it and goes, it's holy before him. If you wasn't holy before God, you could never approach God. You couldn't approach God if you wasn't holy before him. He made you holy. He consecrated you. What's this? He purified you. Now think, think about that for a minute. Hmm. Now there's people here this morning. You, you were sexually abused. Or maybe you were just, I don't know a good word, loose. Maybe you just, you know, had no control or didn't control yourself when, whenever. And, and you feel like, like you're just filthy. You're dirty. You're filthy. Even though you've given your life to Jesus, you might, or you haven't. Maybe you haven't. But you feel just dirty and you're filthy. But this verse of Scripture says Jesus purified you. <laughs> His blood being shed, it purified you. There's water filters out there that, that, that you can pour dirty, nasty water from foreign countries in. They've got all kind of, uh, of germs and bacteria and everything that it makes somebody deathly sick if they drunk it. But you pour it into this, this filter, and as it filters through there, it goes from being deadly, being uh, able to make somebody sick and being nasty looking to pure water that you can drink. The blood of Jesus is greater than that filter. Wherever it is, whatever it is that, that, that you would say, I've done so much 
wrong, so much bad. I, I had something done to me that makes me feel like I'm filthy, that I'm dirty, that, that, that something's wrong with me that caused this to happen. And, and you say, I feel that way. Jesus says, think about it. I poured your dirtiness, your filthiness, your impurity. I poured all that nasty stuff that you were into this blood of mine. And when it come out the other side, it was pure. Your life is now pure. It's pure. It's pure before God. This daily thing that we do, going outside the city gates and spending time every day with God, is not, not so we can get pure, it's so we can stay pure. It's not so we can get holy, it's so we can stay holy and God can deal with things every single day that need to be changed in your life, little things here and there that he will take out and he'll say, get this out of your life. And we deal with them and we get them out of our life and when we do, what happens? That impurity is removed and you're pure. The book of 1 John says that, that if we sin... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The unrighteousness that you pick up sometimes as you're walking around because you are not the unrighteous, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But sometimes we get too close to the world and all of a sudden we start thinking like them. We might even start acting like them. But what do you do as quick as you can? You go to God and you say, God, I've missed it and I need your forgiveness. Amen. Jesus doesn't reshed his blood again. But what does he do? He forgives you. And you're pure once again, just as pure as you ever were. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. Hmm. The first chapter of Isaiah, the, the verse, it says, Come, let us reason together. Jesus is talking to the people. He says, Come, let us reason together. Let, let God and you get together and reason together. It's the same, the same thought as Moses going before God and being with him face to face. In other words, God was saying to them, said, come, you come with your ideas and I'll come with mine, and then we'll reason what? Together. Moses would go to God, and sometimes Moses would go to God and God, like, God, destroy these people. And other times God was going, I'm going to destroy these people. And Moses was like, don't do it. Right? But they were reasoning together. And we have that same opportunity to come before God and reason together with Him. And you'll come and say, God, I, I'm so filthy. I did it again. I messed up. And I can't believe I would. I, I don't know what, what to do. And when you come to God, God goes, I know you did. And I'm going to forgive you. And I'm going to help you and tell you what to do that you don't do it anymore. He says... He says, though, though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white, right, as snow. Though they be as crim crimson, they'll be white like wool. He said, man, your, your sins can be as black as they've ever been. You, you might think that way, but the blood of Jesus Christ took your sins and made them so white. You can't eat, um, not your sin, but made you so white that it, you, you can bar barely be able to look at you. That's how white God's made you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. <laughs> that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Carl, why don't you come on up?
I'd like everybody to just, just stay where you're seated and just bow your head and close your eyes. A little bit different today. I talked about people here that you've been sexually abused and you feel like you, you feel the filth and you can't get away from it. And I'm, I'm not going to ask you to come down front. But everybody's head bowed and eyes closed. If you, if you would, if that's you, you say, I, I've been, I felt that way. I still feel that way. That what you've said is ministered to me. And if, if that's you, anybody at all, just lift your hand up. Say, yeah, uh, that's me. Anyone at all? You may not want to do that. That's fine, too. Is there anybody here this morning? You'd say, I, I am filthy. I never have made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. But today I want to be clean, white like snow. I want all the filth and all the junk to go away. All the th stuff that weighs me down. That's you this morning. Uh, like I said, I won't ask you to come up front, but just lift your hand up and say, that's me. I, I need Jesus. That's you this morning. Anybody at all? All right. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, Father God. Mm, Father God, we just, I just pray over everyone that's here. No, even those that couldn't be here are watching by live stream, even if they watch it later on. <sighs> even if you're here or by live stream, you say, I don't want to lift my hand up. I don't want somebody seeing it. You got my number. You can text me anytime you want. I won't tell, I'm not going to tell anybody. Father, I just pray for the people that are here and on live stream that are watching this. I pray that you would draw them closer to you each and every day, Father, that you would make it easy for them to come to you, to spend time with you, that you would make it even if, as their spouse would just, just tell them, go ahead and get along with God. Just thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Just praise you. If you'd say this morning, I, I, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, but I want to be filled. And I want to be able to speak in other tongues so I can communicate with God directly, more directly than I've ever did before. And I can pray out the will of God, because that's what the Bible says you do when you pray in the tongue, other tongues. That's you this morning. Can you just lift your hand up? Anybody? All right. Well, I don't have instructions for you, but uh, you all can look up here. Everybody can look up here. Um, they got something in the fellowship hall. Is that right? Anybody want to tell them or want me just to tell them to go to the fellowship hall? Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, all right. We're going to do that. Let, let's something real quick before I forget. Uh, and this is totally off kind of soft subject. There's a, a, a thing up there. It's got a QR code on it. I don't know where, Jason's probably back in the room. It's about giving. We, you don't know? Okay. Or might be able to find it. Jason made it up. Uh, we have online giving available now. So you, you can do that online if you want. If you pay your tithes now by check, or there it is. So if you pay your tithes by uh, check and offerings or, and, or cash, you can keep doing that. Uh, I promised the board I'd say this. You can keep on doing that, check or cash. But if you would rather give online, you can scan this QR code if you want a copy of it or just get with me or Sharon and uh, we'll, or Jason, we'll get it to you. And you can scan this and all it'll pop up is Destiny Church and then just some stuff to fill out. And then you, uh, you choose, you want to give a tithe or offering and then you can give that. And then a thing will pop up because there's, there's fees that the church gets charged for using this card, for doing this online giving. But you can pay the fees if you want. And that's what I do. That's what Sharon does when we give our tithe or in offerings. We, we pay the fees. So 
the fee's like 2.5%, I think. And when I did this, it, it's my fault. If you don't like it, talk to me. <laughs> uh, I went and I searched around. I started asking pastors. I said, is this online giving? Uh, we've been doing it for years. But is this online giving something would be good for a church to do? One, one pastor told me, he said, if you're going to have people 50, year, 50 or under in your church, he said, you have to have it. And he said, he has a lady that hasn't went to their church for years, who lives in Arizona, that every year online she gives them $1,000. He said the other thing that was a bonus to, I talked to my brother, he pastors a church. He said the other thing was, he goes, we got people that would go on vacation, and while they were on vacation, they wouldn't give. They wouldn't tithe. And, and he said now that they, we have online giving, they give their tithe while they're on vacation. He said they didn't make it up when they got back. <laughs> Which that's another issue, of course. But, so, so we have this available. We're going to have it. We'll keep, keep it up on the screen uh, for right now so you guys can take a picture of it if you want to. So, all right. So go to the, the uh, fellowship hall. I was trying to get the word hall in front of everything. It didn't make sense. I was like, hall, fellowship hall. So there's cake back there, and Sharon and I will be back there to talk to you guys. God bless you. Mm -hmm.